right. Stuart, we'll be with you in just a minute. We got a, a one quick economic development committee meeting, and we'll be with him with you. We're not in, we're not in a rush. We're used to it. Thank right. you. All right. Welcome everyone for committee meetings for Monday, May 18th. Uh, we do have one special public committee or public safety committee meeting tonight that we need to start off with. Uh, and then we do have some presentations in our other committee. So Hey, good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the Special Public Safety Committee meeting to order at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, two proposed action items. Uh, number one, authorizing the contract for the Green County Corrections Unit at Council 82. Martinez. Motion by Martinez and Handel. Second. Also seconded by Harry Lennon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Perry. And number two, urging New York State to reject proposed legislation S6282, which would disallow county probation departments from collecting certain fees. Oh, Davis. We have Bloomer and Davis to handle as a second. And Linger, please. And Linger. Rivera, also. second. Rivera is a second. Martinez. Martinez. Lennon. Lennon. Oh, committee. Yeah. The whole committee. Uh, uh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> so carried. Um, nothing else in this uh, public safety committee meeting. Um, an action or a motion to uh, adjourn. Yeah. We'll move, Mr. Chairman. We are adjourned. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call Economic Development and Tourism Committee to order at 6.03. <clears throat> we have some guests with us tonight, the Fortnightly Club of Catskill and Cultivate Catskill, who are working on fundraising for a spray pad, splash pad. I want to eat from the village. Okay. Who's going to talk? Okay, Brenda. Cool. You are. Come on up. <laughs> Sure, why not? Hello? <laughs> okay. Can you all hear me without that mic? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brenda Vandermark, and I'm here with Terry Weiss and Lisa Spears from the Fortnightly Club and Michelle Pulver and Robin Smith from Cultivate Catskill. The five of us have joined forces to form a committee that we have named the Catskill Spray Ground Committee. Approximately five years ago, we all met with the idea of putting a spray pad here in Catskill, but we did not have the funding, nor did we really know how to go about getting that much funding. Since then, Robin and Michelle from Cultivate Catskill reached out to us last fall, and we met again to begin fundraising efforts to get this project off the ground. Cultivate Catskill is handling all of the donations. At this point, we are approximately one third of the way to our goal of $150,000. We would like to have this installed by next summer, but if we reach our goal, it would be sooner. We have the village of Catskill behind us. They will be doing the site work for the installation. And once fully installed, they will be handling the maintenance and upkeep of this recreation area as it will be located in Elliott Park. And we have Peter Grassi here tonight to answer any questions regarding that. This spray ground is a much needed water recreation area for the County of Green, as we do not have a public pool available in the entire county. It would attract people from every town in Green County as there's nothing like it near us. The closest one is in Kingston, New York. This spray pit we believe will make Green County even more of a tourist destination than it is now, as it can be used by any age and will be handicap accessible. In addition to being an, 
a new and unique addition to Catskill and the entire county of Green. This spray pad can also be used as a cooling station during times of sweltering heat, like we had last year for both residents and visitors. The spray ground will be open during the daytime only, and the times will be controlled by the village of Catskill. The spray ground will also be patrolled by the village of Catskill Police Department and will be easily seen from the road, and we plan to make it aesthetically appealing to the eye. We are here tonight to answer any questions you may have regarding our requests for funding this project and hope that you all also see this project as a much needed attraction here for both the residents of Green County and the visitors to this area. We're all hoping you guys would be really, and ladies, really generous, you know, and just, <laughs> just open up your hearts to us. It's going to serve all of Green County. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, something to be proud of. Anybody have questions? And we actually have our, we have some photos and stuff online if you want. Yes, you're, 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 you're rendering. Yeah, rendering. Yeah, but also. Hey, well, is this going to be over by where the uh, women's softball field is? Well, no, that was actually the initial thought, but because of the location, as far as the supervision down in the back, I figured it wasn't a great idea. Um, plus, we picked probably if you know where the parking lot where we dump our uh, millings, the big pile of dirt to the side there. Yeah, that area because <laughs> the uh, park is controlled by Wi-Fi, so it can be turned on and off. So the DPW from that building will be able to flash their signal over there and turn it on and off, you know, set the times and do whatever we have to do. It's easier to see, you know, I didn't want it buried in the back. You know, I've had my reservations about it at the onset for sure, as far as them putting it in the back, as far as that, you know, because not everybody's traveling back there. That's uh, that's site right where you're talking about, Pete. Do you think that's stable? I mean, I know that. Yes. Don't I, I had years. Bob from DPW actually. It's the, what is the specs of forty by what? This what we got our estimate on is forty by forty. It's not. A, it's not a super large, you know, uh, spray pad. It's not something you'll see in like in Saratoga or what. It's um, it's an entry level. It fits the park. They've got a set up. They think they picked out the. Baseball, baseball, football, soccer ball. Yeah, it's kind of the theme um, right now. Theme, you know, fit the park. They've got to get it. I mean, I didn't get the actual rendering from the company who designs it to actually see it at that property, but it's got to be done right. It can't just be stuck there. It's got to make sure, you know, it fits, you know, because we do have parking there. I don't need kids running around back and forth sure. trying to run to that. There's going to be some control issues, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah. What's the capacity of this, and how are you going to control it if it becomes over the capacity? Well, as usual, the village police is always going in and out of there, too. So um, I really don't know what the actual capacity for a 4540 is. It's not like it's enclosed, so it's like people are able to run in and out. So um, I'm sure, you know, going down the road, we'll figure that out of how many children and or adults can be in there at that, that time, certain time. What, and, what, um, but what time frame were you thinking that it would have it open? Like noon time to seven or noon to six or? Well, it's definitely during the day, yes. And I think, you know, we can control that. Yeah. Um, turning the water on and off. Mm, and yeah, yes, we can do and it. They're all they on, and they're on timers too, besides. Yep. They're not the, like, they're just walk up and they spray it. Sensors. Yeah, and then there's also it can be turned on and off by, by their phone, by one of their phones too. Yes. So, so if it's a really hot day, you know, you have it on, and then all of a sudden, if you know, rain comes in, we turn it off. So, right. So there is no supervision. You're just counting on the police to come. Yeah, in. there is no, there's no body of water where you would need a lifeguard or anything like that. The water flows off and is, I don't want to say recirculated, but. No, it's a non-recirculating yeah. system. That's the whole idea is where we have to put it because you have two different types of systems. You've got the wastewater system, and you've got a circulating system. A circulating system requires, obviously, treatment water. We have to, then we, that, we can't, my DPW is not gonna sit there and you know, monitor the water levels, but have, you know, so wastewater system uses the village water and the location that they chose is we have a storm drain, we'll let the waste run out, so it's village water, yes. 
Is this something that Department of Health would monitor, like the oh, yeah. swimming pool, like to, to monitor the green level? Or My understanding is the Department of Health doesn't have to get monitored in the splash water at all. There's no standing water, that's why. Is it chlorinated water? It's village water, so it's stuff you have to tap, save stuff you drink. If you want to drink those, so it's really like <laughs> sorry, just playing under a hose. Yes, yes. Yeah. So putting on, yeah. I'm thinking yeah, that the premise of these were probably invented from back in the day in the cities when the right. people used to play in the fire hydrants. Right. They put a lot of these in inner cities mm -hmm. and those kind of places for the kids to cool off. They can't get to a swimming pool or to a lake or, or something like that. My only question is, is it will it be large enough? Because I know when I'm there watching my students softball games and things like that. That park is is full, not just with kids from Green County, but there's kids from surrounding counties that are playing in the that's tournament. That's exactly my fields. point, Matt. That was one of my biggest questions: <laughs> is that how do we control everybody from Carroll, Hudson County, well, everybody that comes to the Catskill once you know, oh, they got a splash pad. Right? Got, is will that be large? Is coming to the village Catskill. I mean, Somebody it's just, small enough, I guess, that at that point it would, it, would, it would slow down, but I would suggest everybody that wants one, put one in. Put one in Carroll, put one in Cooksaki, put one in Casco. That would alleviate the question. They're not on this. To me, it's not no. crazy much. I mean, and we just kind of went with the standard 40 by 40 right now. If What's if, the total cost? Well, 40, um, well, we're raising, we want to raise 150. Um, the estimate is approximately 90 to, to 100 right now, yeah. give or take. So. Also, I, I even know, like, even the adults, like the old timers league plays there. I'm sure well, they would bring families and, and <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, they would bring their family members as well. I mean, well, you have a large park too. So this right. is one portion. One portion of the, the park. Back. Right. I mean, it's not like we're putting Zoom flume there. Right. You know? right. So, right. No, it's, so it's, 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 it's level. It's most very small. It's not most of your right. teenagers are probably going to be too cool for it. And you're going to have your little ones, you know, probably most of the little ones that are at, you know, during a during baseball game, right. running around, you know, they're all playing on, you know, with the playground. So how about the, as you know, it's going to happen, that people bring their pets with them? Well, it's a rule, just like at Dutchman's Landing, there's no, you know, some no dogs are allowed. It's going to have to, you know, there is a rule and there will be okay. Okay, we just installed a dog park with a water feature, so they can go down to that. Okay. <laughs> can we plan on a sign? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, we can only control, we can, control so much. Yeah. yeah. I do see you have a list of donations here. Yeah. What I don't see on there. Village Castle or Village Castle are in service. Now we're doing the prep work, we're doing the site work, and obviously monitoring. And you know, I think it's I, actually I can tell you too. What was this considered for any of the other ones? My other ones? No. You know, I'm doing a boat launch, which actually provides boat launching for everybody in this room and your county and your county, other than Athens, Kentucky. Ours is not staying home, so it's not. It's open twenty four hours. Are you Are you guys sure? Are you positive that the Department of Health does not have oversight? I think they do. Our understanding from the consultants that we talk with, <laughs> and uh, so there is no need for, for DOH. But they should not be hairy because it's draining out into the yes, sewer exactly. system. It's not recycling. Well, there's nothing. It's just but maybe Sean, could you check on that just to make sure? I, I think from a sanitary standpoint. They have an oversight. Hell, I would certainly get that confirmed from. Uh, yeah, and Department if there was any question, we would definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. you got to check it out before you get too far down the road, because that could be, you know, that could be some oversight there that you got to deal with. I think it would be a nice addition. My concern is that I think maybe we should you should think about potentially adding on to it at some point because I think that size might be small. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the key. Is we don't have the real estate. When they for, first went right because we're always scared yeah. about foul balls from the from the ball games as it is no. where we have to place so, right. Well, when Robin and Shelley first came to us, they were thinking in the pocket. They were thinking it'd be a nice addition to Main Street to have them in the park. You know, just little tiny pads going up and down the parks. And there was challenges with that. So and trying to find the funding. So when they got the initial donation, it was like, let's roll with this and see what we can. But wouldn't it be great to have one? Oh, I'm not. 
<laughs> and I was well, in the one that has getting rainbows. very popular. They're getting very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. So and, the, the water that you're going to use, though, obviously you're pulling it from the reservoir, it goes through the filtration. What do you do with the wastewater? You're just letting it go in the storm sewers and run away? I mean, is there any way you can reclaim it? Not without, not without a retreatment system. But every, every sprayer is on a timer. So some kid it, it hit it. Yeah. And it's only on. Uh, yeah. It's not sitting there running all day. It's not something, you know. There's. Yeah. I'm thinking like a dry well or something where you could put that water well to water the flowers in the community. That's where it kind of shot the air. Very true. There's I mean, about. So she's got the specs on the gallons. So there's about 65 gallons per minute per, when, when it's in full use. Per minute? Only being the summer months. Yeah, the summer months. Just divert it where you could reuse the water that's well, it makes sense because it's on a hill just above our feet. Right. It's gonna run right towards you guys. You can put it in a holding tank like this is my down. That could be used to then water the flower. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you, do you know do uh does the little league field still use their sprinkler system? No. All right. 46,000 for 12 hours. It's a shame when like, Tom's talking, you put a cistern down there and you have to swap and you can spring, you know, irrigate the baseball field or whatever. But Alex going to see its own level and you guys can put. No, I think you, you've sparked these guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, so obviously, you're thinking already because there's a, there's a big, the big difference in grade from where it's going to our DPW. So you have to hold anything down below with the flowers. <laughs> and it's water that's yeah. already there. You know, right. you put it in your watering can. Water. I mean, because we all know last year we did go through the drop, so we had an issue. We had we actually had to put a you know a restrictions on water, so we wanted to close down. It. One of the biggest questions was, how are you watering the flowers on Main Street? And we were actually thinking about the creek. But, but if you did use water out of the dry well. Then you would have DOH involved because it's not treated. You're just taking water out of the, the water. No, water flowers. Oh, no. Well, you flowers. were talking about putting a dry water. No, just reclaim the water that runs <clears> through <throat> the surface. Put a cistern underground that holds oh, the water. Exactly. And, by the, and then you oh, can say the same thing like when it rains. Yeah. Some yeah. people have the rain. And now that rain that runs through it, it's yeah. still going yeah. to have to put that same thousand gallons of yeah. Yeah. holding yeah. tank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? So what, what are you asking us for? That's uh, I wrote a letter requesting um, fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we also have um, James Hannes here tonight. Yes. Yes. To talk about our new micro enterprise loan fund. <laughs> Oh, they're all pretty. I know. I'm not here talking about you know, fun things like spray parts. It's simply just a uh, new financing program. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm here today to talk about an update on the state uh, state tax funded uh, micro enterprise assistance program. Uh, last time we came here, I believe it was in January, we were requesting a resolution to authorize submission of the grant to uh, the Office of Community Renewal. And I'm pleased to say that we've since been awarded $300,000 to uh, provide micro-grant assistance to micro-businesses, which are identified and defined as having five or fewer full-time equivalent employees. Uh, that $300,000 breaks down to $255,000 that will be administered into these micro-grants, uh, $30,000 for program delivery, which would come back to the county, and then $15,000 going to program administration, which um, I will get to in a moment. The next uh, steps are to uh, continue on what resolution 18-23 authorized uh, Chairman Linger and the legislature to enter into a subrecipient agreement with the Green County Economic Development Corporation, which I've been appointed as the executive director of. The uh, GCEDC will be the, um, as I said, subrecipient of the program from the county and will be the navigators of the program, if you will. So it's broken down into two main activities. There's program delivery, which is at $30,000, and there's uh, program administration, which is very much the reporting, post-award, 
uh, paperwork and ensuring that all the monitoring is done to state and federal statutes. Uh, the program delivery side is boots on the ground, getting out to the businesses, making sure that we get the, the uh, program in front of them, get them all the resources they need from application to committee meeting that would hopefully then award them with, with the grant. So uh, my time since we were awarded, which is on April 20th, uh, it's been very much getting uh, all the necessary documents in place to uh, sign a contract with the state of New York, uh, get a subrecipient agreement together, get uh, requests or proposals out for the grant administration side of it on behalf of the GCEDC, uh, working with the administration to get uh, insurance requirements and things like that. So we are looking to launch the program June 1st. We're thinking that we will hopefully have the applications out. Um, I'm, and this is all very uh, opportunistic, uh, optimistic timeline. I'm trying to push this out as fast as we can. The good news is uh, we have uh, an incredible amount of folks that are not only interested, but have pre-qualified. We have upwards of maybe 50 businesses who, that have pre-qualified across the county. We have enough funding for maybe 17. Um, and that will go out to uh, approximately like I said, 17 businesses creating around 20 jobs uh, just, just with micro businesses. So once we exhaust all those funds, we're able to close the program out. Uh, we can then go for another round and continue to get the businesses that need need working capital financing. Uh, I mean, it was sort of a disconnect. James, when was the last time we received funds like this? So in 2019, uh, this is through the Office of Community Renewal. They used to have um, a loan program that they would sponsor, much like we have our existing CDBG loan program that's federal money. State had passed through money. They would also do a loan program. Uh, we used to take advantage of that program when it existed, which it no longer does. The last year was 16, maybe? I sent an email to the board that listed all of the years. It's usually every two years. There was a gap, of course, because of COVID when the corporation was formed. This is the first recent and um, for the micro program to restart it since we formed the corporation. Since you did. And that loan program eventually evolved. The state recaptured uh, a lot of the outstanding loans. It evolved into a grant program. This is the first time we've applied for it here. Our splash pads eligible? Uh, <laughs> no, construction related activities are not eligible. I know, I like, I like the idea though. We'll talk. Uh, so I'm happy to answer questions or if there's any, there's any thoughts, um, any increases. Are these reimbursements? Yes. 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 Spend the money first and then we'll build. Yes. So essentially, um, when we're, when we're courting businesses through this process, we're letting them know of all the eligible expenses. Uh, and I'm trying to work very closely with them to make sure that, okay, these are the eligible expenses. You cannot incur the expenses until you've gone through an environmental review, post-award, it's a very specific timeline. If you try to go, um, try to incur these costs prior, you'll be deemed ineligible. You won't get reimbursement. But it is, uh, you show proof of incurred cost, and it runs through the systems, and we get it up to the state, and they usually pay uh, within 30 days. So you said you had 50 pre-qualified. Yes. How are you going to decide which 17 of those 50 are going to be eligible for? It's really a first-come, first-served basis. Um, if whoever has eligible expenses, shows a qualified job creation, brings in all of the required documentation and exhibits. Those are not uh, small tasks to be handled. There's a lot of, of process to go through. And we're even you know, seeing this with our loan program now. It's identical uh, qualification process to get the documents and the job creation. We're even seeing people kind of like fall off there. So really, yes, we're talking about 50 folks uh, and businesses that have, that have pre-qualified. But um, it's going to be more so about who is really ready to go, who is able to bring us the documents and show us that they're ready and eligible first. So if I get this right, you don't, the county, the EDC doesn't hold the funds. No. This, the state holds the funds and they'll issue a check directly to these businesses? So the way uh, the, that process, the EDC takes in the application, it goes through a committee. The committee approves, it goes back to the county for an environmental. Once everything comes back clear, it runs from the EDC to the county, to the Office of Community Renewal, back down to the county, back down to the EDC, back down to the applicant. So there's like six different windows. Paper trails. Welcome to New York. Yeah. yeah. 
other companies. There are values to business have to stay operational to qualify. And what do we do when they breach that or if they breach that? So there's a five year clawback clause, if you will. There's a number of things that can put that business into default. You don't uh, get the national objective within two years. You are spending money in ineligible activities. Uh, you don't stay open. You move your business. There are a number of, of qualifications that can send you into default that would kickstart a clawback clause. Um, and ultimately, if uh, a business gets money and they go into default, much like the CDBG program that exists now, it's the recipient or the county that's that's held liable to hold this uh, through through completion. The question is, sort of sliding scale, if, they, if there were to be a default after two years or three years, is it a 20% per year forgiveness as it goes? Yes. So by the end of five years, it's 20%. I think it's the last year. It's 100% going all the way down. Okay. Um, but that's typically for those default uh, categories. There's the, the whole uh, premise of having this program is job creation, element job creation. You can achieve that in two ways. One, if you're a business owner that's counted in that five or fewer full-time equivalents, if your business owner falls within the HUD uh, guidelines of low to moderate income, you don't have to create a job based on their household income tax returns for the last year. Uh, if they do not fall with, within that and they're too high, then you do have to create a job for a person uh, or made available to a person of low to moderate income status. And we're already doing a lot of that job monitoring with, with existing CDBG programs right now. So we know how to do it. It's just a matter of applying it to a, to a different program. That could be a new business or could be expanded. So it's actually, we have uh, half of those 15, so what, nine, 51%. Has to be for startups, which are uh, at the time of their application, they are in business for six months or less. And the good news is, there's a lot of startups around the county, so it's nice to be able to give them a a resource. Yeah, absolutely. You said there's anything else excludes like construction or? So these all eligible activities are really primarily for expansionary startup capital and it's really working capital. So we've uh, branded this as the multi-grant, uh, a good acronym, uh, which stands for money for utilities, logistics, technology, and inventory. So you can use it on purchasing um, equipment. You can use it on purchasing furniture, fixtures, and equipment. You can use it on paying your rent, your utilities, your phone bills, um, uh, anything to help the, especially the startup side or expansionary capital. You can't use it to pay for construction related activities, acquisition of real estate. There are a few technical pieces of equipment you need um, OCR sign off uh, for. So if I was a startup at uh, donut shop, mm -hmm. that would be, that would yeah. classify. We can buy your mixers. We can reimburse you for the, for the oven. We can reimburse you for inventory that you need. Uh, if you wanted to build a counter, I can't buy the counter. I can't pay for the labor, but. It can it can be incorporated in the overall cost. We just have to show that this the CDBG money is not going to those ineligible expenses. Sounds good. Anybody have anything else? I'm happy to answer questions. That would offend me. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks James. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, and Warren has notified me that we're working on some architectural designs for the tourism center that none of us <laughs> seem to like. That's <laughs> putting it mildly. <laughs> and he'll he'll bring them to us when he has them available. So with that said, I'd like to go into our proposed action items. Number one is authorizing agreement with the county, Green County Industrial Development Agency, Green County Tourism Office, and Visitor Center Redevelopment Project. True. True. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number two, authorizing agreement and grant application for Big Valley Trailbreakers Snowmobile Club. Club snowmobile trail development and maintenance for 2023 and 2024. Village. Planning. Village and who? Jim. Jim Thornton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number three, appointing a member to the Board of Directors, Green County Economic Development Corporation. Lennon. Lennon and Handel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
that completes our board of directors. We have a quota of seven directors, and after two years, we finally reached it. So that was good. Uh, number four, budget amendment, economic development, tourism and planning, insurance recovery. Handle. Handle. Lennon. Lennon. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not passed. And then anything else to come before economic development tourism? Motion. Motion the second. And the second by Mr. Bloomer. Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs> We're going to move into you very shortly here, and we will uh, also give the credentials for Embedded and Delta to log in and screen share. Okay, I'd like to open government operations at 631. And first, we have a presentation by Stuart Rosenblatt on the National Infrastructure Bank. Uh, <clears throat> okay, th uh, thanks a lot. Really appreciate the time. Uh, thanks, Mr. Linger, for uh, making this happen. Uh, uh, Stuart Rosenblatt, I'm in the DC area. I've been in New York many times, lived in New York. Um, went to the Catskills. How about that? That was a long time ago. Uh, what we're going to, uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Linger, how much time do we have for the discussion? We don't want to, you know, um, go over any time. Uh, I think we're going to depend on what sort of questions are out there. I think, um, I think we were, what, saying 10 to 15 minutes on the presentation? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we could do, we'll do less than that. Um, Okay, uh, also we're joined by somebody from Greene County, Carrie Gardner, who's a civic activist and is joining us. Uh, but we have a, a bill that was in the Congress last year. It's been um, redrafted and ready to go back in. It would create a five, how about this guy's, trillion dollar infrastructure bank. So it would uh, play a big role in developing the country and really helping to get the country out of the looming recession and sort of financial debacles that seem like they're littering the road as we go down it. Uh, this would be the opposite. Um, what we want to do is brief you on how this National Infrastructure Bank works uh, so you can understand it. And uh, we've been getting you know a lot of interest and a lot of support from county legislatures, uh, NISAC, but we've got uh, resolutions going in legislatures all over the country, numbers have passed. There's a sign on letter in the New York Assembly. Uh, so this is a, a very, this is being taken very seriously uh, as a alternative to what is otherwise a very slow motion downward trajectory. Uh, what I want to do is actually introduce our uh, a lead economist who will walk you through a PowerPoint presentation, which we will send you. Uh, on how this National Infrastructure Bank uh, would work. And uh, feel free after we're done to ask any and all questions. Uh, we just wanna really try to uh, give, you the, give you the lay of the land on this. This is a big, heavy lift. And uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're used to pretty, uh, you know, pretty you know, kind of far-flung discussions. So with that, I'm going to introduce Alfeka Mutardi, who is a former senior economist at the International Monetary Fund, has a long list of credentials. She was there for uh, well over two decades and uh, is the lead economist on this project. And she's going to walk you through a PowerPoint and, uh, and we will go from there. Great. Thank you, Stu. And uh, thank you to all of the uh, legislature for having us uh, come to, to visit with you today. Uh, the bill that we had in Congress that Stu was referring to, and gee, why don't I have my, I hope this is the right tech. Yes. Uh, the, the bill that we had in Congress was HR 3339. It was in the last session and that was the bill number. It'll get a new bill number in this current session, but essentially it is the same uh, type of proposal. What this legislation does is creates a $5 trillion 
public bank to lend for infrastructure projects all across the country. Now, that seems like a really big number. But what, first of all, why do we need a bank like this to do this? The reason is because we're simply not able to adequately finance infrastructure in this country, either through the federal budget, through state and local budgets like your own, uh, through public private partnerships, uh, uh, municipal bonds, uh, even though we had a bipartisan infrastructure law passed a year ago, none of that's big enough to do the whole job. And as a result, we have built this big buildup of projects that uh, have not gotten fixed and desperately need attending to. Uh, and that's why we need the bank to come alongside of budgets and complement them and be, uh, be able to top all, up all the financing we need to fix everything. The idea of a public bank to do this is not a new idea. Actually, it's a very New York idea because the first bank of the United States started after the American Revolutionary War was started by New Yorker First Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton. And he used it to build our first industrial centers uh, after the American Revolutionary War when we were trying to get out from under the, the, you know, the, the grasp of the British and they viewed us as an agrarian society and we needed to get uh, busy, um, you know, getting ourselves uh, industrialized uh, like the rest of the world was. And that's what this first bank started. And there, there was a second bank. The first, these two banks are uh, uh, headquartered in Philadelphia. Then there was uh, Lincoln's banking system. And then there was finally the Reconstruction Finance Corporation that was started under Herbert Hoover and then picked up by FDR and helped us to get out of the Great Depression and World War II. And these banks were supported by six American presidents, completely bipartisan, 3-3 three, three on both sides of the aisle, were very successful. They aren't generally around anymore. They had a 20-year sunset clause in them, which is why we need to replace them with a fifth bank. So this is quickly how this bank works. Instead of going to the federal budget and asking for money to get this bank started, we instead use the Alexander Hamilton method of going to the private sector who are holding about $26 trillion in treasuries and asking what they like to sell in a small portion of their treasury holdings into the NIB in exchange for preferred stock that would pay these private investors a little extra. And that extra stream of money would come out of interest earnings from the bank's loans, plenty of money left over to meet the bank's other operational needs. That is, this bank is self-sustaining and doesn't require infusions from the budget to get it started or capitalize its operations over time. And then that capital sits on the bank's books, not used up in any way, but it acts kind of like a rainy day fund. All banks are required to maintain on their books $1 in capital for every $10 in loans they give out. So uh, as we raise, as we lend this, this big $5 trillion over several years, we can raise the capital over the same period. So that's the capitalization side of opening the bank. This describes how the loan process works. And actually it works exactly the same as a commercial bank. This bank uses the same accounting software as any commercial bank uses. And so whenever it books and creates a loan on one side of its books, its software automatically creates a deposit on the other side of its books. And whenever you do that, you're actually adding to the na nation's money supply. Uh, so e each loan increases the money supply. And uh, that's exactly where the, 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 the first order of the, the uh, lending comes from. Then the NIB uses cash on hand coming in from other deposits and loan repayments to circulate money out of this new deposit and into the rest of the banking system. That's the loan process. The loan terms are very advantageous because this is a public bank and we want to keep financing costs down to the bare minimum that we can for all of the, the borrowers. So it, we would be charging around the treasury bond rate for interest charge. That's a little bit better than a municipal bond rate and flexible repayment terms too. The borrowers would be state and local governments, any public entity like yourselves who owns a bit of public infrastructure like a county, a city, for a road, a bridge, a school, can come into the NIB directly to request a loan. Simple application process too. Uh, so we cover 5 trillion in projects, as I mentioned, in 20 different infrastructure, hard infrastructure categories. 16 of those categories are covered by the American Society of Civil Engineers who tracks things like bridges, roads, what state are they, uh, repair are they in, schools, water systems, and the electric power grid. And that's what they say we need to fix everything. That's how much money they say we need. We added four more categories of our own that we also think are critical, a complete high-speed rail network all across the country, broadband everywhere, 
affordable housing, 7 million units targeted to the very lowest income earners who need them the most, and then some large-scale water projects to address drought in the Southwest, where we grow half of our nation's food supply. If we don't take care of this, we'll see spiking food prices in New York and other places as well. So here's what the NIB will lend, expressed in billions of dollars, to compare it to the bipartisan infrastructure law, it's also called the Infrastructure uh, uh, Investment and Jobs Act, that was passed over a year ago. You can see that's only providing 550 billion of new money. One tenth the size of what we actually need in new money, additional money above and beyond what budgets are providing to fix things. And so it means every single state, every single county like your own is not going to get what it needs out of that bill to repair roads, bridges, transit, water infrastructure, nothing in here at all for affordable housing or high-speed rail. We're glad that they passed it. Shows bipartisanism can work, but we're, if we're serious about fixing infrastructure, we're gonna need the NIB to top up, provide the other 90% of the financing still missing from the picture. And not only can we fix everything, all of our infrastructure, but we can really supercharge uh, our economy as well. This is this is economic development with a big E and a big D in front of it. It'll create millions of new great paying jobs. It'll make uh, uh, America manufacture again, to kind of borrow a slogan, because all of the construction inputs must be made in America that go into the, into the, uh, the um, projects. It'll raise GDP growth up to more than twice what it has been make the economy more productive. All of this is better for businesses because they can produce more, get val more value for money with the same amount of inputs. Uh, their trucks will move a little bit faster and you know their broadband will be make their businesses thrive and those kind of things. Um, all with no new federal taxes, spending or debt for, uh, for, for running this bank. That means this legislation should appeal to Republicans, fiscal conservatives, answers the question, how do we finance infrastructure without slamming budgets any harder than they are? It'll also reduce inflation because it works on the supply side and supply chains. So with more supplies of goods arriving on time, their prices will come down and it'll offset any incoming recession. We're very concerned that the Federal Reserve policy right now, and even the tightening uh, on the budget side in Congress is going to result in a big recession. And with that recession, there'll be lots more unemployment and it could even trigger a financial crisis, God forbid, but it's possible. Uh, and with all that higher in unemployment, we can the NIB can hire up these unemployed workers into these great paying jobs. So uh, what's in it for New York State, for example? Out of the five trillion, the state could qualify for up to 320 billion over a 10 year period to cover all of the state's backlog of infrastructure projects. Uh, here's a listing of some of them we've seen in the press. It's not a complete list, but the state needs 40 billion for bridges, 51 billion for transit, uh, 30 billion for drinking and wastewater systems, and a whole lot of money for affordable housing. We can finance all of those projects build big ticket items like the entire gateway project to move traffic along the Northeast quarter better, put tr uh, transit authorities back on sound footing, refurbish the electric grid, which you've got, you're spinning uh, power in now from, on, uh, from Canada and haven't got enough uh, grid capacity to hook up windmills that are, they're, they're putting out in the Atlantic. Uh, and so uh, your grid is uh, really straining. And we can build three high-speed rail lines throughout New York State along the Northeast Corridor, the Empire Line uh, going from the city up to Albany, which would probably pass right by you, and the one that goes along the Great Lakes. All of those will spur economic development as well, uh, increased tourism coming up to your area, um, allow you to re, re uh, shore manufacturing uh, centers in your areas and counties as well. Replace all of the lead service lines in the state, fix the stormwater systems that are overflowing, enhance education and train workers in these needed fields, build affordable housing. These are all some of the projects that uh, this, this, the bank could finance. I understood that you also might be interested in the difference between this National Infrastructure Bank proposal and the uh, the, the other bill that's in Congress right now. It's, it's numbered uh, 490. Uh, and how, what what is the difference between these banks? So really quickly, the biggest difference is this NIB is big enough to make sure 
all projects reach your county. Uh, it'll cover every infrastructure need in every jurisdiction. Uh, and uh, we'll, there's a positive <laughs> bank to make sure that the money's reached there. Uh, the, 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 this other bill is not specified how much it will finance. Uh, the structure of the bills is different too. Ours is a true bank. And this one is a revolving fund that must de depend on money coming from Wall Street and then being lent out at a higher rate. So it's gonna be more expensive financing. And uh, then uh, we don't require anything from the budget. Uh, neither does the other, but it's going, the other planted to get money from pension funds. We're not sure if that's going to work. And we can, we want to really keep public infrastructure in public hands to the extent that we possibly can. The others require either P3s or some dedicated stream of money to repay back loans. So altogether, we think this is a great idea for making sure we cover everything and making sure that these projects reach your county. That's the important thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, and I see also that the bank would be uh, FDIC insured, but not the other fund? Right, the That's other correct. one would not. That's correct. There's no government guarantees at all on the other one. The other one is not a uh, FDIC in, insures deposits that are in commercial banks, and that one doesn't take deposits. It's a revolving fund. It's not a bank. But it, but it also specifically says there, it will get no guarantee by the federal government, no full faith and credit. So our question has always been who would invest in it, especially now with no, no backing whatsoever. So you plan on raising the 5 trillion by people selling treasury bonds, correct? Not quite. No. Uh, it, it really takes a, uh, getting used to uh, how these banks are uh, set up. But um, what, what we need- Alfaka, put the two slides up again. Okay, sure. Um, apologies. So uh, there are two buckets of money. One is the uh, money to capitalize the bank. That is where we ask for 500 billion in treasuries from the private sector. Capital sits on the bank's books and isn't really used up in any way, but it acts like a rainy day fund because banks are required to keep this on the side in case any loans or the economy goes bad. So that's what capitalization is for. What's actually- Let me, let me, stop, let me stop there for a second. Go back to that slide. Okay. Just so you're really clear, the bank can actually start with 25 to 50 billion in capital. We don't think it's going to be a problem at all to raise that. We don't think it will be a problem to raise the 500, but it can it can open with say 25 to 50 billion out of the 26 trillion. The bank is federally backed, full faith and credit. It is the investors get the identical protections they get on their treasuries plus an additional interest rate. So it's a nice induced. Uh, so we don't think it's a problem. That's so just to make it clear, and then it will work its way up to get the 500 billion uh, over time as things really start to mushroom. Go ahead. Yeah, and then the, the so uh, uh, then the lending operation. That's a different bucket of money, and you might be surprised to know that when any commercial bank lends it actually creates money on the spot. It's part of its accounting software, but goes back to the days of the Mesopotamians and so forth. But uh, each time they book a loan, they create a deposit. Whenever you create a deposit, you're actually adding to the money supply. You've just created newly minted money. Whenever you go in for a car loan, for example, your bank creates money on the spot to give to you in the car loan. And these uses cash on hand from other deposits, part of the cash on hand coming in from other deposits to circulate money through the banking system and send that money on to your, your, um, your car, your car company that you bought the car from, that kind of thing. So that's where the money actually comes from. It's a secret of deposit taking banks that they actually create money. And this process is the, has created 95% of America's money supply. And uh, for all of this process, it, uh, these banks have the highest fiduciary um, um, precautions in place, like FDIC insurance, like uh, you know risk managers and things like that. So they won't go the way of SVB, which a uh, bank in, uh, in California, which had no risk manager, um, and full fiduciary uh, things in place uh, and to ensure that uh, all the loans stay on time, on budget, and are, are successfully implemented. 
answer your question? Yeah, somewhat. Uh, so what's the current rate for treasury bonds right now? Aha, there you ask the secret sauce question. Right now, I've, I've done a, a kind of like a back of the envelope, can this bank money make money? It's going to come, if it's fully lent out uh, at the treasury bond rate of maybe uh, three and three quarters or 4%, uh, then it should be bringing in about 120 billion in interest a year. It'll have to pay about 10 billion for uh, raising this the, the extra 2% to, on this capital that it raised. Uh, and then it'll have to pay for other expenses like paying for its workers and things like that. Uh, and then it will have to pay interest to its depositors, uh, which normally under normal circumstances would be around a half a percentage, a quarter of a percentage point, a half a percentage point, something like that. With all that, it can make money. Unfortunately, now the uh, Federal Reserve policy has raised the federal funds rate so high that it's cascading in and uh, actually endangering banks because it puts things upside down. Now the federal funds rate is higher than uh, other kinds of interest rates. And so banks find it very difficult to make money. Um, I've got a kind of a long-term chart of what's going on here. That won't last for forever. Uh, it only happened back in the 1980s when we had high inflation and it's happening today. Over the last year, year's worth of period, um, we expect that this bank will lend out over uh, this over a 10 year period. So that won't that situation won't persist all the time. But we'll have to make some small, small short term adjustments for the fact that Federal Reserve policy is actually hurting banks right now. Would you say that if this is a entity that needs to be approved by Congress and Congress needs to sell treasury bonds to fund its obligations, why would they allow the private equity market or private individuals to buy treasury bonds at a higher rate because they're shooting themselves in the foot? Okay, there are two treasury markets. The first is the primary treasury market where every year when the federal government runs a deficit, it has to go out to the treasury market and create new treasuries. Um, this bank doesn't buy any of those new treasuries. All of these treasuries that we'll, that we'll buy here will be treasuries in the secondary treasury market. That's where the $26 billion. Trillion. Oh, Trillion. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bill, sorry. <laughs> The 26 trillion of all the uh, um, past deficits have accumulated, and now all these private holders are holding these 26 trillion dollars that they sell back and forth to each other in the treasury market all the time. This will, won't interfere with the primary treasury market sales because it is just the change of ownership from one owner to another. Uh, it's not anybody coming in from some place else to create new demand for treasuries that will up up stage the primary treasury market. That's not happening right here. But it's a great question. Is that the, uh, the securities for stock, is that gonna pay a dividend of more than the borrowers cost? The interest rate on the preferred stocks. Yeah, the interest rate on the preferred stock pays the little bit extra. That's an enticement for these investors to to come in, and it's fully uh, uh, accommodated within the internal earnings of the NIB, so it doesn't need any subsidies for anything. Is there investing period on those shares? I'm sorry. On the preferred stock, is there investing period? Uh, th yes, they uh, have to. Uh, make this transaction, it's not callable to call back their treasuries for a 20 year period. So that gives us a long term uh, runway for uh, this capitalization to, you know, uh, support the bank. Thank you. Stuart, what is it that you need or you're asking for from our legislature? Uh, we're asking for two, th I mean, that's the old Jack Benny joke, you know, your money or your life, but we won't, I mean, I'm sure some people still tell that in the Catskills, but who's to say? Uh, we're asking for two things. One, we do have a resolution that you know we sent you. And if the county uh, legislature would consider passing a resolution urging Congress to do this, uh, that would be really good. 
Uh, the second thing is that we are, you know, having a, a hilarious discussion with Mr. Molinero and uh, and other members in you know in the New York delegation. And uh, any help that people would like to be to convince the congressman to co-sponsor, we actually could have reintroduced our bill a couple of months ago. It was done. We're hoping for uh, a bipartisan introduction. And I know there's been discussion with Mr. Molinero, who's a, a pretty smart guy. Uh, if you would like to help on that, that would be the second uh, ask. So, uh, or any other you know member of Congress that you know. I know you probably know Pat Ryan and others. Uh, uh, those would be the two asks. Do you have any questions? Do you have more questions? Go ahead, if you do. So I think what our plan will be is to kick this around, discuss it, we'll bring it back on probably for next month's round, and, uh, and see where we go. That, that would really be excellent. Look, we want to thank everybody. Uh, we know this is like a big, heavy duty, you know, lift. It's not, I mean, I got a kick out of the discussion, frankly, on the uh, uh, water system for the kids. And I think it should be bigger also, frankly. Oh, by the, yeah, I forgot to mention. I think you're going to be bombarded with kids. I think it's, it's yeah, there, there's lots of money in this bank for uh, parks and recreation in this bank to lend for. But we know this is a much heavier lift, and so we really, we really appreciate the questions. I don't know if Kerry wants to say anything. I know Just she had a couple other people on there. I don't know if they, uh, if they have anything for you. Kerry, did you want to say anything? I know she's uh, got on to so their support. So do you want to say anything? If you do, you have to unmute. Um, not a big deal if you don't. We know this is it's a wild, you know, very good. I guess not. Um, so anyhow, yeah, so we wanted to thank you. This was really a lot of fun. We're going to send you the PowerPoint. And we did send um, a number of the resolutions and background statements and also the uh, <coughs> talking points because a lot of people, you know, like to have it, you know, as somebody always says to me, come on, keep it simple, stupid. And so we... Uh, we broke it down in talking points, especially for elect and other officials. So we want to thank you. We're also happy to continue the discussion. Uh, we're not in the, you know, um, you know, one shot deal. We're not trying to pull a fast one. So people do have other questions. Uh, you can route them directly to Alfaca and uh, she'll be the one sending the uh, PowerPoint and the background material. And we just want to thank uh, Mr. Langer and your uh County for uh, having us come in and uh, walk you through this. I, I would add one last thing and then I, we'll get off and let you go back to business. Um, look, these are going to be, you know, this crazy guy, Thomas Paine, years ago, you know, when uh, Washington was uh, running around in New York State, said, you know, these are the times that try men's souls. Uh, this is going to be, you know, pretty wild period of American history. It's real live American history. And uh, we don't know, nobody really has the crystal balls to where all these different financial economic machinations are gonna go. What we do know is that we have stopped growing in a really massive way, which Americans used to be accustomed to. And our view is whatever, however the dust settles on all of the you know, wildness, we've got to grow. And for the moment, we, we're here in DC, there is no plan B. Don't think anybody in Congress has a clue as to how to get out of this thing. And don't think anybody in the administration does. You're not hearing a plan B because there is none. This is plan B. So we just want to put that idea in your mind as you ruminate on this. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time and we'll go from there. Thank you, Davis, for uh, indulging us. Oh, we, we don't worry. We got another call. We're going to be out in Montana, believe it or not, briefing a whole group in about an hour. So, you know, we this, we have fun. We do this all day, around the clock. The interest is really serious. All right, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank really you. appreciate the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Okay.
Okay, we will move into the proposed action items. We have five of them. Number one is approving home rule request, mortgage tax, green county, ordinance, overbought. ordinance and overbought. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Just so everybody's aware, this is one that the state legislature used to take up as a multi-year uh, approval. Uh, and that's why we had to redo this. This legislation. Number two, a resolution in support of A7093, CJ's law legislation. Bobart, Lucas. Bobart and Lucas. I'd like to second that also. I'm going to second that myself. Would the whole committee like to second that? Yes, yeah, that would yes. be good. Okay. Lennon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yes. Number three, amending resolution of 279-11, adoption of Green County Administrative Manual. That. I will second that. Just a question, Greg, for Ed. Uh, when you, is this a new policy? So much of this is added. Change. Change. I mean, I we were that deficient on on, that, on the on the existing policy we had. I wouldn't say deficient. Yeah. It's a living document. We got to move it on. Streamline it. Process. I have staff also contribute here. Yeah, uh, and a lot of it was also just technical and formatting adjustments and rather than make a hundred different variations, it was better to just copy and paste them in the document. That way you get a whole view of it okay. in, a, in a more systematic way. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yes. Number four, authorizing distribution of the mortgage tax. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yes. Number five, correcting assessment roll, town of Kusaki. Maria Elena Dio. Tax map ID number five, three. Point zero zero dash three dash two four. Our man, Ordinance and all board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Okay, informational items. Anybody going to speak on that? Ray is here. He's, this is his report. It's very important. <laughs> Should ask. <laughs> Not as long as the guy before. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you all have the the synopsis analysis done for the volunteer firefighter and ambulance workers exemption that we passed in January. Um, the good news is uh, the majority of our towns and school districts or 50% of our school districts have passed this. Uh, three of the five villages uh, got noticed that another fire district passed. So seven of 26 fire districts. I think a lot of the fire districts don't need to pass it because of the way they, they operate under a protection district for, for a community. But um, they're starting to come on board. Uh, so originally I told you that there was around 1200 firefighters on the rolls. 137 of them, a little over 10%, 11, 12% applied for the exemption. Um, the impact was much lower because I was working with a number of 1,200, so gave you the worst case scenario of $17. Um, it come in on an average home last year, valued at two, a little over $250,000. The impact's about $3.50. If they're in the village, increase that by about $1.50. Um, so the impact and the report spells it all out for you, and I even gave the breakdown. This report became necessary because uh, a bunch of the school districts that didn't pass were looking for this, uh, and are so they want to see where it all landed. Um, I think the numbers will go up over time. I don't think it's going to be as drastic as the 12. 
So, and then I have a couple other items to report on. But what, if you have any the, questions? Yeah, I got a question. What? Why was there? What's the reason for such a low uh, turnout here? I, I think the time frame, the timing of this. We passed our resolution in February. Towns and school districts and uh, the villages were scrambling to have this on the books before March 1st. So they had to have a local law on the books by March 1st in order to do this. Yeah. Um, they did, but I also think that uh, maybe the firemen didn't know enough about it. If you look across the statistics by the towns, you see which towns had, had more. The other thing that you want to notice too is, is they may they may feel that if a school district didn't hop in, the, the assessors were very cognizant of the fact to inform that firefighter that it may not be beneficial if you're going after the income tax credit next year, that you would want to stay with the income tax credit and not go for the real property. Obviously, we have 15 that are below that $250 income credit, income credit but I don't know their individual circumstances that may not be filing income tax for one reason or another. But but next year, they could get another bite at the apple. Right? Every, the, every this year. is an application every year. I right. have to be applied right. by April 1st. Okay, yeah, so once not, we get the word out there, we'll probably get more as the years go on. Yeah, and the, and the word has been out. Um, and we've done both my office and the administrator's office has put a lot of a lot of notices out to the to the towns to get them on board mm -hmm. to to pass this resolution. Yeah, I'm just surprised because there was a lot of interest. A lot. I mean, I think the way the state approved the rollout on it, it's, it, it, it's tough. And there's 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 talk of some changes and modifications in the law. We're getting really deep into the legislative session here. I haven't seen anything on the assembly or senate specific to this but it doesn't mean that something's not going to come out in the next couple of weeks yep. thank you Ray. and on a couple of other points unless there's any other questions on this one what did you say we had three school districts uh five of the ten school districts approved it so right here it says carol durham did not correct adopt correct um did was there any conversation between your office and their board or anything why they didn't? No, uh, nothing. So, nope. so now they'll have another chance to reconsider this for next year. Absolutely. A lot. Of, I think Albany County did that actually. All, Albany yeah. County is um, sheltered. Right. They are planning on adopting, and I think you'll see RCS come on board because they usually adopt whatever Albany County does. So the right. same with their seniors exemptions and, and the like. So I would expect them. I'm trying to think what other school districts didn't adopt here. Green, Greenville did not adopt. Green, Greenville has, a, if you remember historically, go back a few years when we were trying, when you guys passed uh, the alternative and call for the, excuse me, the old Cold War veterans exemption, that had, that required the same thing. We hopped on board quick. Yeah. Both Catskill School and Greenville um, lagged way behind. Greenville took three votes over three years, we did the analysis every year for them to try to get them to come on board. They were getting hammered by the by the veterans of the community, um, but they're 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 very mindful of the impact. You got to remember, Greenville School is the highest the highest tax rated school in the county. So you, you take any dollar that you're taking in an exemption, you're just shifting that to another taxpayer. So they're very mindful of that. And, and don't necessarily keep up pace. Carol, Carol tends to do the same thing. They tend to they tend to come around, but they tend to lag behind. Mm -hmm. So on uh, some good news or bad news, I don't know how you want to take it, but I just told you that last year's uh, in 2022, using the state um, equalization rates, the average home in Green County, this is countywide, was 253,000. Uh, using the new level of assessments, which will become the equalization rates for 2023, that number is now over 311,000. It's a 58,000 dollar increase, 23 percent. Just shows you what the market's doing. Um, kind kind of hard to keep track of. It's crazy. Stuff. It's it's insane. I, I it baffles all of us. The assessors are like they look at the sales every month and they're like, "You got to be kidding me!" Or, or, when's this going to slow down? Um, I will be coming back to you hopefully by next month. I'm about two thirds of the way through it. The senior uh, aged exemption, uh, which we 
normally look at last October, well, December, we adopted uh, the local law to increase the income limit to 34,000 um, with a max sliding scale to for around 43,000. Um, and then we had a kicker this year, the state in the last hour again in December passed the second senior mailing that went out um, that the towns did. Uh, we saw 191 new seniors come on this year. That tax impact is just countywide, which is the number I finished today, is about a one little over a one percent shift in county tax dollars. So be prepared for when I come back in front of you. Hopefully by June, if not by July, we have a lot of time to deal with this. Whether we want to deal with um, deal with increasing the income limit again. I don't know. We have to see what, what the economy is going to do come October. Um, we'll see where that goes. Some good news on the state budget, as you all are probably aware. It's not the first. Huh? Well, I don't know if it's good news or bad news, but I'm going to give you news. Um, part, part K, which you guys may not, I might have mentioned it to you, but um, they're changing in regards to this senior income, and it, it went through with the budget. They're changing the definition of income to simplify it. But along with that, they've offered three local options. Um, it's basically using your federal adjusted gross income, less your dividends, and um, by local option, you can add back in untaxed Social Security. Um, and there's other two other options. Um, I just have started to delve into the, what, the way the language of the law came down. Um, it was just announced on Friday for us. So hopefully we'll find out whether we need to do some modifications in our, our local law uh, to kind of keep. The good news with the 191, if you remember I reported we were about 80 seniors low since the pandemic. So we caught that, but now we've got 110 more that you know historically over the last 15 years, we haven't had, that's, that's where the numbers been. The report and the, the bad news of that or the good news for the senior the bad news for the ta the other rest of the taxpayers, most of them are qualified for the 50% exemption. So um, part N, thanks to Ed and NYSEC, uh, you all know that got killed. That was the return of funds. Uh, and it's awaiting um, heard from the state uh, attorney for orcs the other day. They're awaiting the outcome of the US Supreme Court, the oral arguments were three weeks ago. Um, and it's likely that there will be legislation put in, and they're hoping that the decision comes down before the legislative closes session this year, but it's unlikely because the Supreme Court doesn't finish till the 24th. Um, and then part N, the bad news, which Greg, you asked me about solar N, uh, the, that's the appraisal model for solar uh, that did pass. So it killed the lawsuit from the eight towns in Scary County um, that the state did not need to file a CEPO, the, uh, their rules and procedures for creating that model. Um, so all of our towns are using that model for this coming year, which by law, they would have had to go back and readjust everything. Um, we'll see what happens. They claim that they're gonna put a new model out come late August and have a 60 day comment period. We'll see, uh, it's not looking good. Um, I'm, I'm really thinking the values are gonna go down on that. Uh, and then one last thing, and this is good news. Um, two of my staff members, my GIS staff, uh, put on a presentation at the Schoharie Watershed Summit, which was yeah, participants from Schoharie County, Delaware County, Green County, planning departments, local officials, and the like, um, they put on a presentation in regards to the web map. They had 25 uh, people sign up for that hour. It was a, a credit course for uh, the participants. So they all got credit for attending that. It was well received. And my two staff said, everybody, anytime anybody wants them to put that hour long presentation on, they'd be willing to do it. Any other questions? Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Is there anything else to come before government operations? Motion to close. Second. Just have, I just thought oh, we do that one. What, what, would government operations be something that would we would discuss 
about the potential upcoming uh, city transporting uh, illegal immigrants up to Green County. And will we have to go through government operations and some kind of re resolution that says we are not supportive of this or we are not going to use county funds for any such thing? So would we have to pick government ops right now because if it's either that or in finance, I'm going to bring a resolution forward that we are not to not expend any county funds for any illegal immigrants brought to this county by New York City or any other county or municipality. And I don't know if there's support for it, but here's what's on the definition of illegal. Generally, what they're doing once they're here, they're not considered illegal anymore. But they of course they are. They've been processed. It's still illegal. They have no social security number. It's said they have none of that. Social security number, but they are allowed to get a job. They're allowed to pay taxes. Work immediately. Then why are they staying in a hotel? Why are they looking for hotels? Why are they, is the city paying them to sit in hotels all day long? Because they're not working. They're contracting. I, I thought I'm not an expert on it, but I thought the, the distinction is that these were asylum seekers who the process. Welcome to the town Not welcome. Well, but it definitely started to move people to different locations outside of the place. So we're going to make ourselves very familiar with the process, what's going on, and whatever rights that uh, we as a county have. Which <laughs> <laughs> what about these other counties that have declared a state of emergency? The state of emergency is one half of the elements. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the local laws or the enforcement thereof. It has to be approved by the state. We, we can declare an emergency. That declaration by itself doesn't really get us much without them adopting, uh, like, like Rockland did, and then took it to court and got to stay. That stay is probably going to be temporary. Uh, we'll find out. Not sure how long the stay will last, and they last days, and they last weeks. And that was based on the zoning, right? That was very specific. Um, the zoning, but they pointed the finger at it. They said Rockland County specific. That was the only one that that's actually got teeth to it, right? So why not? Because if you notice, Orange County, County did the same thing, and they sent two buses straight to Orange County, and they, they had already contracted with the hotel there. So there's absolutely nothing to do with that. But, Orange, you know, Orange didn't get the temporary restraint order that Rockland did with certain elements that have to be met. The judge in the Rockland case felt like they did it. But again, a TRO is just what it says. It's very temporary once they get um, the return date for their petition, which is the 30th of this month. I think the, the likelihood of getting the uh, preliminary injunction much like getting the TRO is not a huge hurdle, but getting yeah. the prelim that, that's a much bigger deal. It usually requires the posting of a bond because now, now they're in two way legal battle. So we can't we can't work out with our existing lodges. We we have to allow them. I mean, we can't say, no, we, we are not, you're not allowed to house anyone here, here illegally. And yeah, we're not in the zoning business, but it's the local communities that have the building code <coughs> as an enforcement issue. I believe what Pat said that the Rockwell County has a zoning issue of housing beyond 30 days. That was the hook, if you will. <coughs> The only ones that I've seen that actually through existing violations on that long resort where they're sending people 
also they were sending them without a plan for the future. So, you know, everybody's going to learn from it. I'm going to be monitoring it as carefully as I can. What you're doing, whatever the state is doing. So I, hypothetically, the city of New York could contract with two hotels up at the Kisaki Thruway exit, and that, that could be filled with illegal aliens, illegal, illegal immigrants, whatever you want to call them. Those two hotels could be, and there would be, and they could sit in there all day, and they could walk their way down here or get on a bus down here to try to get social services or health care, and would we be responsible for that then? No, because they're not residents of the county. Not temporary assistance, things like that? No, no, no. Uh, after 30 days? Well, there's a, that would have to be an issue. There's a, I forget the exact terminology for them to, uh, at one point, it would have had to have been released from public service and then to fall back on the need for service. And that's when you have the ability to change their address. And at which point then they would become a Green County. The theory of the city says they're paying for four months of, of services. Why the city of New York pick four months, but what is the significance of 120 days? I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a legal issue there or not. Um, that's an issue of contention though, by the by the counties, the counties are not happy with the four months when they know it's going to take over a year for these people to come through the process. It's, so. going to, it's never, it's, it's going to take years and years, the amount of people that have come through here. Sure. Yeah, but I, th I think to answer your first question, yes, they can buy that hotel and pay X amount of hours per day per room. <clears throat> That would be a very stupid move, seeing the pictures that have come out of New York City, what <laughs> motel rooms look like now. Damn right. But but I mean, this is, this is a very concerning problem. This is being forced upon us by our federal and state government. I don't think, I mean, I've had multiple conversations with multiple people and Right now, there are no easy answers, that's for sure. It's a, it's a lack of planning, it's a lack of participation. <laughs> we have laws on the books, Pat. Federal laws on the books in terms of immigration. Federal government, the executive branch, not enforce those laws. They're derelict in their duty to enforce those existing laws. And now it's reaped upon counties, cities, and states because they didn't do it. <clears throat> Immigration is not a state issue, it's not a county issue, it's solely a federal issue. I believe Congress calls tomorrow, I believe, we'll talk about our own guests with um, Congressman. I'm not sure what the content will be, but we uh, have a conference call tomorrow in the district relating to immigration. Uh, uh, and I think everybody saw our press release in the last day. Basically, we, we don't have room. We're well, clear we're not a sanctuary county. We are not. If they want to rent out a, a complete hotel, um, then I guess that's what they're going to do. But if somebody comes here and looking for services, uh, the inn is full. <laughs> so, so, once again, so if they go to these, uh, say these couple hotels or whatever hotels that might contract in within Green County and they require police services, can we ask our sheriff to not show up? Because we are funding the sheriff's department. No. I mean, they have duty to call the state police. I, I, I think it's under their duty. I don't know if they, they take the oath. I think the sheriff is gonna not respond to a call. Yeah, this, this is we're in a terrible situation. Yeah, we're not alone. Do we know how many counties are sanctuary counties? Uh, yeah, I don't have. A I know that we're not, I but I don't know. Um, I could ask NYSEC if they know that tomorrow. We know our, our neighboring county is going to be in. Right. All the city of Hudson. Yes. Ulster? 
Kingston. is. <coughs> the city of Albany is. City of Albany? Yeah. City of Hudson. Oh, bring it on more. Hey, we, uh, we just can't afford it. Period. We're, we're, a, we're a smaller county. And, uh, we're just not set up. Uh, you know, our taxpayers should not have to uh, fund this. We're not set up for it. It's it's unfortunate, as, as you're saying. Oh, I think it just it doesn't help in relationships between the local counties. Either. Right. That's too damn bad. For our responsibilities to our property owners here in this right. county. And right. them alone, and not to people here illegally in this country, right. and not to New York City residents that want to matter their city because they make stupid decisions. It's that simple. If they have nowhere to, for them to go, and it's traffic, what it boils down to. They're just moving around. They're not vetted. No. I know Aaron was looking to see if she could get, if they, if somebody showed up, um, if she could get names and birthdays, I think it was, um, just so she could attempt to identify people up there. Um, There's no record of these people. They, have, they, they can't the investigate what people with their potential that, sex offenders from their home countries. That's kind of risk. Murderers. Without us having a database, we would never be able to do any kind of a research to determine yeah. where they originated. Couple government doesn't make them wrong. The turn court data of 3035, I'm sure we'll square things. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hopefully the hotel or whatever owners, you know, yeah. just yeah. say no. Does it change anything if there's a preemptive state or an order? Or do you want to? Um, Orange County did theirs. Well, Orange did not. Orange never enacted any enforcement. No, they just did an EO. Um, and now, now they're suing the hotel for violating the EO. Yeah, does it go anywhere? I don't know. I think that's the joy <coughs> hand is, is the effort for like a temporary injunction worth worth the lift. But isn't the hotel allowed to do business? <laughs> I mean, think about their standpoint. Rockland right now is not two thousand dollars a day fund. Rockland has the zoning in place that says they can only have, be there for certain amounts of time. Because of the no, that was already in place. <laughs> right. Um, that's what they. That's how they based it on that zoning, and, and zoning is very powerful. And they, they knew what was targeted, which resorted that it was sent to because Mayor Adams directed that. I think at this point, if we were to do it today, we'll file it tomorrow, which is an exaggeration, but, but we get it done. Um, I think we would be dismissed uh, under the doctrine of rightness because they haven't identified where they're sending people. We wouldn't be able to make the same arguments that Robin was able to make. In other words, this that the city couldn't enter into that private business arrangement uh, with that hotel, which had all those code violations at the time, which had zoning issues related to it. We wouldn't know which arguments to make yet. Maybe in a day or two, we won't. Our statement that we put out today, do we, do we send that to all the media outlets that are all aware of it? Okay. Yeah, you have one call back. Yeah, Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Should share with neighboring counties too. Oh. Well, we well, had a, a motion to close in a second. Did well, we're not done with this. Yeah, I, I just, I'm just telling you right now that if if counties are going along with this, then they're not our friends. Yeah, and they're not sure looking out for their property owners. owners. And I'm hoping other counties aren't speaking for us. They're not looking out for the ones who are paying the bills. No. That's the problem. Yeah. So they're not our friends, and they're not property owners' friends. 
and they're not obviously property owners. They're not American citizens' friends, so as far as I'm concerned. So we got veterans sitting on the street, homeless, can't get their services they need, and we got to potentially house people here from third world countries, whether they're here because they're leaving their lousy country or they're just here for a free ride and a thousand dollar cell phone or whatever else they're getting. It's got to stop. And I think it can stop here. And I think we should do it 100%. But we don't even get notified when they're bringing them in. Is that correct? Be, it won't be. No, I don't think the contract with the hotel contract that the hotel makes with the city. Has anybody reached out to the hotels? Can you make a deal? Which way do I call? <laughs> there's, there's some that are somewhat sh <laughs> closed for a number of reasons. Who knows? I can contact them at your local towns that the code enforcement in this county. Right, it's local, towns, local towns, but I'm just saying as a business owner in that hotel, it, just to even consider it, that's what I was saying before, it's pretty much just damn near unpatriotic. Right, so they, they would have to get like DOH approvals for if, if, if water's been turned off or you know, that type of thing to reconstitute that building. They would need to go through some you know, rehab, depending upon whatever the reasons they closed or not. Now, basically, if it's just a seasonal place and they're not ready to open up until Memorial Weekend anyway, that's part of their annual process of, of reopening it. Get the DOH in to check water and septic. But I'm sure there are many places that are have been shut down for years. If they get a phone call, oh, chick 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 chick. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but I mean, the code for the key would be is are they, <clears throat> does the facility meet the local building code standards yeah. and zoning? That's the question. Yeah. And for a local building inspector and code enforcement to find out. So what's the, <coughs> do we have to look at it tomorrow and find out if there's a way to go um, to put it out there? We also have to help all with bow and arrow tomorrow. Fair yeah. information there. We're waiting for the ice sack to come out. Do that late today, did it happen yet? My gut feeling is probably probably a declaration of emergency and emergency uh, order under Executive Law 24 and see if the Department of State approves it. Um, and perhaps we can have an order of where emergency hotels cannot enter into these contractual obligations with the city of New York. <coughs> And that's just a matter of housing. How about feeding? Like, what, that's us. These people, if they get put into a hotel, lot of going to be us. That's going to be us. Where, how are these people going to eat? Or is that going to come to, you know, social services to be able to? We can ask no, they would, not, they would not be eligible for services downstairs. Right. And then how they uh, get a hotel that just has rooms. How how are these people expected to, to be fed? Survive. Like where, theory, where does that fall? Theory, the city is has that obligation to make sure they're housed, fed, medical, bathroom, school. That's all going to be. But do we really think once New York City gets rid of them, do you really think there's going to be any follow up on that to make sure that everything is falling into place? Our surrounding counties because don't even do that when they, when they poach our Probably office. not. We're not for long. Right. They're going to be fully. There is no doubt if they are brought here at some point, they will become 100% fully dependent. Fully dependent. Yeah. And that was another order that the governor signed to expedite the million dollar land and state budget district. What do you mean for the uh, illegal immigrants? Yeah. What, the money what was it? Last, budget, last year was a couple billion dollars. Again, veterans get what? 20 million? If that across our state, I mean, this is just an ass nine. Deuteronomy 28. I don't think there's anybody on this board who disagrees with that, Mike. Well, I'll hold on a resolution, but I got to tell you, if I see it here, 
not going to be pretty not at all. Oh, we'll try a little bit, see what uh, what actually all us can get approved. It's all going to be approved by the Department of State. So submit whatever you want. They don't want to get turned down. <coughs> but I think we'll have, we'll have one written down there. Fast forward it for sure. Oh. <coughs> So you just take a look back and take a look at the people representing you in Albany. It's more or less where it comes from. It's developing so fast. It failed you. This is really moving quickly. We'll have a lot more answers tomorrow. Then the next day, more. We don't want to miss that, you know, uh, that portal um, to get our change in. But yeah, right now, I'm going to find out beyond the doc chat to see what's going on. And yes, is there any recourse that we would have against New York City for sending them up here to counties that can't afford this? Do they realize that? I don't know. I mean, we're, we can't afford it, period. There's so much money that gets dumped into New York City. We don't have that resource. Is there any resource? Is there any, can we get any recourse down the road? Has, has any county board that against I mean, I the city? Have absolutely no idea. That's this. This is yeah. Be, so no county has challenged anything is, yet. Not that the challenge. There's no body of case law. On, right. This is yeah. And if the city is paying that bill, then there's no harm to the yeah. Bill. But they may be paying the they may be paying the bill as we just heard getting them here. But then we're going to pick up the freight. But that's what and after that, that's what and saying. that's what we cannot afford. That in Green County cannot afford this. But if it happens, you've got to be able to show that it happened. You can't just say, "Well, we're afraid of this." Happened. That's that's where I meant by you know, damage. Yeah, not but if you wait too either. long, you can't wait for a damage. Wait too long. Well, that that's what the preliminary injunctions are for. But they're, they're complicated and they're costly. That's a litigation that will go on for a long time. And if the courts are not both, we're, we're going to know really quickly whether or not Rockland County had a post the bond. Uh, what was the bond? The <clears throat> Who knows? You don't know. I don't know. But the city of New York will be asking um, for the post that will be subject to damages. You have to say, I know a little of it. Yeah, we waited until today to put the announcement out just so we can get along so the weekend stuff. We put it out today so it's front and center. But it's still evolving. So. I think if nothing else, an executive order with, with pending action, we sent a message. At least we're not rolling over. That's where I'm at. I mean, there are no executive order police. You know? So if we issue something and the state says no, it's like we'll try to tailor it as closely to uh, the one that's there to approve. I think we need to act on that right away. And I think also remember, considering that the town and villages from a code enforcement standpoint, you know, I, Maybe we should think what one of our action items could be is to help support the town and village budget by helping them with code enforcement issues. But can you imagine the deluge of work on most of these are part time positions within a town or a village? They, go they, there. Couldn't, right. they couldn't handle it. They're going to take a census and see yeah. forever. There's too yeah. many people in a room and everything else. You know what I mean? It's uh, occupancy of room. You're asking right. that guy to do or port or person to you know take on a lot of responsibility right. and report on that without people that we don't know even you don't even know what they're capable of or where they came from. People sleep on the floor. Not to mention the a lot of these buildings have been shuttered for years and years and they're not up to date on code. Um <laughs> God forbid an emergency. Uh, right. This is a, are, there, are there smoke alarms? Are there fire it, yeah, no, that's what I mean. This yeah, is a recipe for disaster here. Yeah, where would the liability fall? <laughs> yeah, right. with the so property, with the property us. owner. Probably. You know, where they'll, is be, they'll be going in the hotels <clears> and house seven, eight at a time. They're not going to put them in five here and five there. Yeah, they're going to be costing too much in oversight for that. They're going to go to the these chain of Hampton Inn was built here or whatever in Catskill. They'd be a potential site. Yep. 
and we'd lose anybody coming to this county for Tourism. business or vacation or whatever to a contract from the city, there would be illegals in there. Tammy's in Human Services, and a day or so ago, she got a phone call from a guy asking about putting up tents and porta potties on his farm, and asked if the county could pay for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There you go. Yep. There you go. Can't make this stuff up. Does anybody yeah. know where all these people are coming from? Because the only country that New York borders is Canada. Are they being bust up from Texas or something? Sure they are. Yeah. 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 Probably coming in by boat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Central America. Yeah. yeah. Venezuela, El Salvador, Honduras, Ecuador. My heart goes out to their plight. But my God, this is overwhelming. Yeah. They're also coming from China and Africa. Yeah. And the Middle East, everywhere in the world. Well, we'll tell you right now that you look at those other countries and you look at their mental health hospitals, their facilities, and you look at their prisons. You see a damn lot of empty places because that's where they let them out. people all go out yep. and north. Yep. Don't doubt it either. Don't come back. Specifically, say when people come up and they're asking for the services, we lost them for the nearest sanctuary city. In the event that it should happen, can we do that? We can do that, but it's more difficult if they're not asking for services. What do you do? Yeah. No, they're going to be asking. Walk the bus down here. It's a little bit. Yeah, hungry enough to be running out of the white side. Yeah, and they know it's on the late show. Why not? It should be 50 counties marching up on there. It should be, but it's like it's got to start with somebody. I mean, uh, I, I know a little Sean's involved at NISAC and everything, but if you ask me, it's just a lot of freaking hot air and talking when, you know, there's going to come a time where that's over. People are going to have to. Stand up and be accounted for and stop it. Yeah. Unfortunately, the laws are what they want, are and we have to follow it. I mean, no one even talked about here about the <coughs> medical end of it. I mean, we no, didn't even we didn't even scratch that. No, that's not we no, have we, a we'd have to, a hospital, huh? A without a that's hospital. what I mean. That's why we're not set up for it. I don't know why we and, say. Uh, and we say we have laws and we have to follow them when we have a federal government that doesn't follow That's the right. laws on the books that create this problem. Yeah. So if you ask me, all those laws mean nothing to us and we should not follow anything because a rule of law means nothing. Yeah. A so rule of law is what pushes us civilized. Next, the next lower level of government, we push down to our towns what we do. That's what the federal government is doing. They're pushing it down onto the states and onto their counties. Oh, your state representative, they, they like I'm saying, they failed us. Not this just us, everybody in this state, even the people at the federal level. So, if we can do an executive order to stop it, I think we really need to do, that. We can do an executive order. I don't know exactly what happened, but we'll go on. <clears throat> we don't need a resolution. No, I think that's, I think that's the direction. We need something fast. I mean, Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. No, they, we don't. They, it doesn't need to be something that we are. Right. They can put together an executive board. All right. All right. All right. Let me ask for a new motion to close. Motion to close. Second. Close. Well, there's Lennon left both times. Okay. Protect me. If you keep still, we'll be all right. Your legs keep control. still, we'll be all right. All right, don't lose control. Never happened. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. <laughs> we'll pick up Becky's sister and brother. We're off tonight. We're going to get the hell out of here. We're meeting. Uh, we're meeting. Already? Yep. Okay.
proposed resolution number one approving home rule request mortgage tax green county. I'd like to make that. I'll second it. Mr. Leonard second it. All in favor of that. Aye. 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 Oh, that's carry. Number two, approving home rule request sales tax green county. I'll sure certainly make that. I'll second. Okay. Any uh comments or anything? Otherwise, we're all in favor. All right. All right. That's carry. <clears throat> Three authorizing contract, Green County Correction Unit Consul 82. I'd like to make that. Lennon. Lennon seconds it. All in favor. All right. All right. Opposed? Opposed. Okay, one opposition. All in favor. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Number four, authorized agreement with Green County Industrial Development Agency, Green County Tourism Office, Visitor Center Redevelopment Project. Over Overball. Just Charlie, I have a question for Warren here. So the existing visitor center is now on a parcel that Stewart's owns. No. Oh, yes. So why are we even involved with them? Industrial Development Agency. Oh, I thought the stewards was donating their old parcel to Green County tourism. Well, remember, we we acquired the property from the Thruway Authority where our visitor center sits. The idea is to combine that to carve it up into new lots for sale. Mm -hmm. Stewards will buy the property where the visitor center currently sits, and as part of the Contract between the IDA and the stewards. They've agreed to demo the building at, at um, their cost and give us the um, old school. And then we enter into an agreement with the IDA for the renovation of that, and then they'll turn it over to us for the future. Okay. Thank you. They're putting Good money job. into it also, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Did they hire an architect? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back to you. Let's hope so. Okay. I had overball. I did not have a second. All oh, second. All in favor. Aye. Oh, that's correct. Number five, amending resolution number 279 11, adoption of Green County Administrative Manual. Bulge. Mr. Bulge. Mr. Mr. Davis and Mr. Hobart. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's care. Number six, authorized agreement and grant application for Big Valley Trail Breakers, Snowmobile Clubs, Snowmobile Trail Development and Maintenance 23 and 24. Overball. Overball. Davis. Davis seconds it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Oh, that's care. Number seven, warning for fuel oil. Hobart. Hobart. I'll second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Oh, that's also care. Number eight, authorize the highway department to enter into an agreement with CDM Smith for construction inspection services for replacement of Ed Bloomer Road Bridge <laughs> over to Gooseberry Creek, bid number 3 20096 0 Town of Honor, bid number 176125. Mr. Light, would you like to introduce this? I sure would. I figured you would. <laughs> Who would like to second? Bulich. Bulich. All in favor of that. Aye. Aye. All that's carried. Number nine, authorize the county highway solid waste superintendent ward to replace a Bloomer Road Bridge over to Gooseberry Creek, pin number 1761.25, pin number 3-20096-0, town of Hunter. Mike. Wait. Over Bob. Over Bob seconds it. All in favor. All right. Aye. All that's also carried. Number 10, authorizing implementation and funding for the cost of 100% of the cost of a transportation project, which may be eligible for federal aid and or state aid or reimbursement from bridge New York funds. Omar. Omar. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, that's also carried. Number 11, authorizing implementation funding of the cost of 100% cost of a transportation project, which may be eligible for federal aid and or state aid or reimbursement from Bridge New York funds. Linder. Linder. Davis. Davis second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. 12. 
awarding bids to purchase materials highway or Martinez. Omar. Omar second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. 13 awarding bid for wash and screen crushed stone. Fuelage. Fuelage. Omar. Omar second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's carried. 14 authorized supplemental proposal number three with Barton and Lejudis. DPC for additional engineering services necessary for solid waste transfer station hooks up and modification through Martinez. Omar, that's Omar. I just have a question, uh, Sean, on something like this. What do we have overall left in the contingency part of that bill? You got, would you happen to know about? Uh, no, we're not talking about head because it was, you uh, had a number of things that went went through that capital project. Okay. Uh, including equipment, which which we, we knew we had to buy, but right. So uh, we will have to make a final proposal of, okay. the, of the capital account. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Number 15, authorizing agreement, Green County Department of Human Services, Aging and Capital District YMCA. Omar Davis, Omar Sector, all favor. All right. All right. Oh, that's carried. 16 authorized agreement, Green County Department of Human Service, Aging and Markets Home Care. Davis. Overball. Davis. Mr. Overball, second. All in favor. All right. All right. All right. Oh, that's carry. 17 authorized lease agreement, Green County Department of Human Services, Aging and Town of Jewett. Mike. Mr. Lake. Lennon. Lennon, second. All in favor. All right. All right. Oh, that's also carry. 18 authorized agreement, Green County Mental Health Center. Carol Durham Central School District. Leonard. Mr. Leonard. Lake. Lake Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's scary. 19 authorized agreement, Green County Mental Health Center with Kutsakiat Central School District. Martinez and Hobart. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's scary. 20 authorized agreement, Green County Mental Health Center with Hunter Tannerville Central School District. Lake. Davis. Lake. Davis Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's also carried. 21 authorized agreement, Green County Mental Health with Wyndham Ashland Jewett Central School District. Lake. Lake. Leonard. Mr. Davis as well. Dr. Davis, Davis. Mr. Leonard, all in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's carried. 22 approving, approving center based agency provider contract preschool special education program. Davis. Davis. Over oh, Bob. Oh, well, second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's scary. 23 authorizing distribution mortgage tax. Mark Nez. Lennon. second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, so scary. You're not getting any of these, uh, Matt. What's going on? Tired. You're not listening or what? <laughs> or not paying attention. Uh, number 24, establishing capital project. Number 138, 2020 statewide interoperable. Communication emergency service. Lavera. Mr. Lavera. We came away. Davis. Davis. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, Aye. That's Gary. Good one. 25 budget management, economic development, tourism planning, insurance recovery. Lavera. Lavera. Over boss. Is over boss. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's Gary. 26. Petty cash, burial fund, Green County Treasurer. Over. Lavera second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's carry. 27. Correct assessment road town of Cooksack is three Elena DO tax map ID number 53.00-3-24. Hobart Mark. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's carry. 28. Authorized authorization paid claims highway. Mr. Gillich? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Uh, I'll send you a Charlie. Oh, Mark, second. I thought you were going to grab that one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. 29 authorization paid claims. Rivera. Hobart. Okay. Rivera and Mr. Hobart. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's carried. I need to lose control. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the resolution. Uh, we have with us tonight the treasurer. We have a treasurer report. Hopefully, hopefully everything is good. Mm. Everything is good. Yeah, I told you. Uh, if you look at your report, you see that the payments on the working taxes are slowing. That's expected. It's vacation time. People are going on vacation. 
when they pay their taxes. <laughs> Either day payments are decreasing also. Delinquent taxes, however, are better. But no tax, any more respect to self I don't know what's going on here. No collections, it's about 20 million, so they always increase another 16 million. The most important thing I have to do tonight is in an effort to save paper, I did not make copies of this. I will tell you, you need to go to the Hudson Valley Pattern for Progress. They have done a research paper called The Great People Shortage and Its Effect on the Hudson Valley. You'd be amazed to change the way we govern within probably 10 years, talking about the, uh, the issues of why is there such a shortage of nurses? Is it why are we seeing fewer and fewer applications for a job? Yeah. Have you noticed that it takes months to get an appointment for your car? Have your house painted? Mm -hmm. How about getting your car repaired? <laughs> if these research numbers hit the deck, you will see a real hope migration from New York. And where is because it? Because those who are here That's are going to have to pick up the slack. So, once again, Hudson Valley Pattern for Progress. <coughs> Great people shortage. Get a copy. I would have run you copies, but I would have probably been spanked if I did that. Oh, well. I'm the paper. Hudson Valley Pattern for Progress. I would be one of the vet feet that that mirror is at the shrug. Yeah. The book Atlas Shrugged. Yeah. Here is it 100%. Yeah. Any questions? Any other questions for Peter? Motion to close. Motion to close. Yep, we're closed. Please, Charlie.